What is up everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about three stocks that I'm looking to swing trade right now in the beginning of October in 2019 in this rocky market that we've been in, this very volatile market that seems like it's going up one day, down the next, it's just not picking one distinct direction. I want to share with you guys my thoughts involving these three stocks, technical analysis, entry points, exit points so you could get a better understanding of what goes through my head when I'm looking to swing trade in the stock market. So if you find value in this video at any point, feel free to go down below, hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate that and consider subscribing if you do want to see further content about the stock market, investing and trading. This is the channel for you. So right now, quick little side tangent, the SPX, the S&P is up 25 points at the time that I'm recording this video on the 4th of August. It's doing very well right now, right? Yesterday, it did quite well as well. And the previous two days, it did very poorly, which goes to my point that I made about a minute ago, that the markets have been very, very volatile, which leads me to these three stocks that seem like they've been doing decent in this turmoil that we've been seeing recently. The first one being PG also known as Procter and & Gamble. And I talked about this one in yesterday's video a little bit, and I talked about how these quote-unquote value stocks, these quote-unquote safer stocks, safer than a lot of stocks out there, they do a bit better in times of turmoil when maybe some of these growth stocks aren't doing as great, right? Because PG, it's viewed as a company that is going to do well even in a recession, right? But some other companies, maybe some tech stocks that really their products aren't needed in times of a recession, maybe they won't do as well, right? So some people funnel money from growth in times of rockiness and put it into stocks like PG and some of the other ones that I'm going to share in this video that are considered more value, right? So PG, you can see the stock's appreciation has been fantastic. You guys know it pays a dividend. It's very, very stable, and it's a growing dividend as well. And from $89 in the beginning of 2019 all the way to where we are now is insane, right? That's about a $30, $30, $35 price appreciation in the matter of 9, 10 months here. And you guys can see these moving averages, they've been acting as support levels, both the 180 SMA and this 50 SMA. And it seems like every time we've retraced, every time the price has pulled down, we've held this 180 SMA support and it's happening again, right? We've pulled down from 125 down to about 120. We held a higher low and we held that 180 SMA, which is telling me that this stock is looking to continue its uptrend. It's looking to maybe now push to the next higher high, whether that's at 125.50, 120, uh, 126, or beyond, right? And that's a good thing because that allows us to get in on these dips and then, of course, swing trade the stock to a profit. That's obviously the desired goal in this thing called swing trading, which I'm a part of, and I know you're probably a part of if you're watching this video. So it's obvious, guys, that this is a nice dip buy opportunity, especially with how it's been reacting these past two days. And you guys can see on the five day, five minute, if we zoom in a bit, you know, this one's been doing quite well. Obviously, it took a huge hit, as did a lot of the stocks this day in the market because the markets in general got rocked. But again, we're recovering now, so it's worth looking at as a potential swing trade. We're breaking out of moving average resistances right now. It's, it's looking like we're holding this 50 SMA support. This is a good sign. We're also getting a bullish cross, the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA right here. These are all bullish signs on the smaller chart time frame for PG and for entry points, exit points. Honestly, guys, at this point, I'd probably like to enter PG on either a pullback here, maybe down to about 122.50. I'm looking to see if it ends up holding this old resistance as a new support from yesterday, right? This could be a nice little pullback entry, 122.30, maybe 122.50. Or let's say we don't get that pullback because that's all also possible, let's say we break out. Ideally, I'd like to see a full-on breakout above this 50 SMA um, 
into the 123.40s, 50s, maybe even 123.75 area. That could be an entry point if we do end up breaking to the upside. But either way, this general area right here, I'm looking to get an entry point, but I want to see what the price action is going to look like heading into next week because I do plan on buying this on Monday or Tuesday, depending on how the futures open up and how the markets are looking. Exit point, I told you guys before, 126 could be the next higher high 126.50 that's where I'm looking to exit honestly as we start to get close and break out of 125.36 which is this previous high so PG is that one that I'm really really liking right now it seems like it's been doing quite well um, despite how the markets have been doing over these past couple of months right if we go to J&J &J, this is the second one that I'm looking to swing trade right now we broke a very critical technical level on Johnson and Johnson, right? We were trading horizontally for it seems like about two months, right? From about 132 down to about 127, this general area of about five, six points. We held the support multiple times. We got rejected at that level multiple times, right? And now what are we seeing, right? Today it's up $2.30 up nearly 2%. Very good green day so far for Johnson & Johnson with about two and a half hours left in the market today. And this is breaking us above that resistance, right? This is a breakout into the next channel that we're seeing from 131, 132 up to about $140, which is that next resistance. And what happened, guys, last time we broke above this channel, right? We actually got rejected last time, which is something to keep an eye on, which is one thing that that's negative right now, in my opinion, about J&J. &J. But let's say we break out of this level here at about 133.70, where we actually are right now, roughly. What happened the last time we did that? Well, we actually trended all the way up to that 140 level. So the fact that we got the initial break above 132, that's a good first step here in Johnson & Johnson. Now I need to see the next resistance break, which is right where we are now. It seems like a red candlestick's forming. Until, you know, until that breaks, I don't think I'm going to enter. But once we do get that, if we do get that, that's going to be the next confirming sign that I need to see to then enter a position on a swing here on J&J. &J. And Despite everything that's been going on right now with Johnson & Johnson, the legal action, all the stuff, if you guys have been following J&J, &J, you know what's been going on. This is still a stock that people view as a quote-unquote safer stock, as a safe haven, as a recession-friendly um, stock, right? You know, because... It is one that's been around for a long time. It's a dividend king. It, it's increasing its dividends. It's it's known to be very, very reputable in that sense. And people just view it as one of those safe companies that people flock to when the growth stocks are starting to get hit and, uh, you know, when the economy is starting to slow down, right? That's kind of how the cycle goes in a sense. So J&J &J now, entry point, I'm looking at probably... 134, 134.20 if we do get that. Maybe we get a pull down retest at 132. Maybe we could get an entry point there to a swing up to 134. Sell here, then maybe rebuy as we break out again. That's possible, right? Ultimately, the, the, the exit point here would be around 140, but I'm comfortable selling anything above at this point if we do end up breaking this level, which would be the, one of the next resistances, right? I'd be comfortable selling if we start to break into the 137s, 138s, you know, right around here is where I'm looking to start selling out of that swing position. Overall, this offers a nice margin of about 5% from around 140, uh, 134 up to 140. And if we go back to PG, because I didn't actually show you guys the percentage on this one, now that I think about it, roughly from where we are now up to the, let's say that 126.50 target I had, that's around a 2.6%. So overall, it seems like J&J &J does have a bit more potential there. But I also think, it is a bit more risky with all the legal stuff that's been going on um, recently with Johnson & Johnson. And again, I'm not getting into that. You guys probably know what I'm talking about if you do follow that stock for yourself. So the third one that I want to talk about is WMT Walmart. This is one that 
is another one of those um, stocks that you would consider safer, right? A lot of people shop at Walmart. It's one of the best retailers out there, right? It's, it's in my opinion, the best. And honestly, they're starting to give, or not, they're not starting to give their, their uh, uh, Amazon a run for their money. Let me not say that because that's false. They're actually late to the e-commerce game, but they're actually getting into the e-commerce game heavier now. I made a video on this like a year ago. I definitely doubt anybody remembers it, but I was talking about how Walmart, they're a couple years late to the game, right? Now they're starting to incorporate it more, which is good. Uh, it's a good addition to their retail business, which again is one of the strongest ones out there. But nonetheless, that's not what we're talking about. We're looking at this chart here, and this chart is telling me here, guys, that we actually ended up bouncing on an old resistance at 115 here as a new support, which is very important, right? This is something that could potentially be a head and shoulder, which would be obviously detrimental to our swing trade here, which is why I'm actually waiting to break the 50 SMA first. But let's say we end up getting rejected here and doing something like this. I'm not looking to enter Walmart at that point because that is going to look like a head and shoulder. We'd potentially be dumping under 115 at that point to maybe retest this 180 SMA at like 112, 113 or something, right? Which is obviously not what I want. But let's say we break out of this 50 SMA this upcoming week. We start to hover around 117. Actually, we're already at 117, maybe 118. This could be a decent entry point on a potential breakout to retest that 120 high. But there's a reason why I had this stock as the third because honestly, guys, out of the three ones that I talked about in this video, this is the one that I'm liking the least. I probably like PG the most, then Johnson & Johnson, and then Walmart, which is kind of why I guess subconsciously I ordered them that way in this video, right? But nonetheless, if this breaks the 50S, SMA, I think there could be a potential run. This might even be a day trade or even a two-day swing trade, while J&J &J is going to be more of a one- to two-week swing trade, and Procter & Gamble probably around the same time period, one to two weeks, um, similar to J&J, &J, right? So overall, guys, this one needs to break that 50. If we zoom in a bit to the 20-day, you can see we're already looking to pull down and test the 180 SMA on this chart, so that's a good sign. Keep an eye if it ends up holding this. That's what I'm watching. If it dumps down, you know, that's not going to be too good for the bullish, uh, uh, you know, case in this situation. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, right? So three stocks are J&J, &J, PG, Walmart. J&J, &J, PG, I'm liking a lot, but I figured I'd throw in Walmart because it is one of those, um, I guess you can say, safer stocks. I'd say J&J &J and PG is a lot safer than Walmart, but Walmart is still one of those that people do consider a value stock. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you did find value in this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and join our Strive Smart Discord chat, join our Strive Smart Facebook group, and follow me on Instagram, at Stas surface just my name i'm posting everything there in the story from call outs to trades to things that i'm doing throughout the day if you guys want to see it that's where you can follow me so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching peace out